Scores of newspapers have shut down their print editions or closed shop altogether over the past two years. It has gotten so bad that the Federal Trade Commission is stepping in with recommendations on how to save the industry. Among the FTC's suggestions, granting news organizations tax exemptions, perhaps expanding copyright restrictions, even government subsidies. These ideas leave many First Amendment activists uneasy here. But interestingly, Columbia University President Lee Bollinger says they may actually have to be options we consider right now. Mr. Bollinger joins me now from Columbia University. Good morning to you, uh, sir. I've, I've got to say, you are such a well-known uh, First Amendment defender here. You shocked a lot of people by coming out and saying uh, that this government should be putting money in, into uh, the media. I mean, how is it that you, you changed your position in some ways here? Well, I haven't changed my position. I, I think the first thing to realize is that we've had a system over the past century that included significant public regulation and public subsidies to our press, uh, not least of which is the PBS system and NPR, but also the broadcasting uh, field was a mixture of hi uh, a hybrid, really, of private and public regulation. So what we have today, which I think is probably the greatest press in the world, is the product not simply of a free market, but of a, a mixed system. And my idea, my thought, uh, is that we really need to now think about a global free press. Mm -hmm. Many countries, CCTV from China, Al Jazeera from Qatar, and so on, are moving into this space of trying to influence and, and report on the world. And we really need to be part of that. And building on our NPR and PBS is, I think, a, a very sensible way to go. Well, it is a key American principle here, you know, that a free and open press is part and parcel of a functioning democracy. When you talk about Xinhua or Al Jazeera or some of these other foreign news agencies, they're going into this business theoretically with the point of view added in. Yes, uh, yes, they are. And of course, BBC is another government funded um, a part of the world press and uh, highly respected. So uh, and and so is some of the um, other government funded uh, press uh, institutions, France 24 and, and uh, others. I think the key point uh, is really to uh, recognize that getting information, journalistic, professional, uh, independent uh, mm -hmm. information to the world and to us is a critical part of building both the United States and our role in the world and a, and a better world. How we do that and how we accomplish it is, I, I think, the key question. And I think there is some should be some role for public funding building on what we already have. Well, when you pen this editorial, uh, you not only caused shockwaves, you caused others to come out and write on this topic as well. And well-known author and blogger Jeff Jarvis came out and, and made the point that journalism's entrepreneurial, not institutional. You'll inhibit it if you get the government involved and pointed to new media as actually lowering the barrier for entry. If you can type, if you got a computer, you can get your information out there. Why doesn't that work? Right, and I think that's uh, very important. I think the expansion of the new technologies of communication and opportunities for people to speak and report on the world is a, is a great thing. So from the standpoint of the First Amendment, from the standpoint of public policy and our values, uh, we really want to encourage that. I think there's no evidence in history and there's no uh, reason to think in theory that we will get all the kind of reporting on the world we need mm -hmm. simply by relying on the on uh, the free market. Uh, that has not been the case and I think it's unlikely to be the case. So I think we really need to consider building, as I said, on what we already have, which has significant yeah. public funding in it.